Well, Becky, it's such a pleasure and a treat to have you joining us today. Thank you. Do you want to just quickly give us the rundown on your role at LinkedIn and what you do? Yeah, sure. So um, my role at LinkedIn is I'm head of business development for um, Australia, New Zealand. And what that means is that I manage all of our technical and product partnerships um, for LinkedIn in Australia. I also work very closely with our Microsoft team, who's LinkedIn's parent company, and just deal with a lot of like wonderful innovation and new things that we're trying to do, especially in a time like now where COVID-19 um, is just taking over our lives and, you know, ways that LinkedIn can provide value to um, those job seekers, uh, employers, you know, people looking to just be inspired. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a busy couple of weeks. <laughs> I bet, I bet. It's been so crazy. And um, when we were chatting, Becky, um, so we worked together um, before all this happened on International Women's Day with LinkedIn, but you wrote a blog post recently that was very interesting to me and it was all about writing your skills narrative. So can you just talk everyone through like, what does that mean and kind of what were you, what were you alluding to in the blog post? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give a little bit of background into how the skills narrative started to evolve. So for me, um, when I was kind of still a bit younger um, in my career, I was looking at, you know, different options. Like, what can I be doing outside of what I've normally been doing, um, which at the time was sales, to improve and, like, just learn more? And quite frankly, I was speaking with a mentor of mine, and she said, well, what do you feel like you're actually good at? And I was like, uh, wow, um, that feels like a very, like, invasive question, but it was something that was so obvious that I really had never quite thought about. Um, and there were things that I was good at, but then also didn't enjoy doing. And so then it became a question of like, okay, well, what are the things that I enjoy doing that I'm good at and I should be transferring into other roles? Um, and, it, and what it did was when I started thinking about what am I good at, it also obviously identified things that I felt I wasn't great at and wanted to improve on. But then it also, you know, she, one other thing she said to me was, you know, there's so, not all things are technical, right? Like if you want to be a great leader one day, of course you need the skill sets and the technical skills to achieve that. But the reality is, is you also need like really great organic skills. You need to be able to talk to people. You may need to be able to collaborate, work on teams. Um, and so, there's really two sides to your skills narrative. Um, and I can share that article with everyone on the call afterwards, which is your technical, what are you technically good at? And then what are you organically good at? Like, what are the things that you love to do every day um, and you think you do well? And that's where you start to form your skills narrative. And really you should take this narrative into every interview you have, into every conversation you have, because it really helps to define who you are, not only as a person, but also who you are professionally and what you want to be known for and do things that you enjoy doing at the same time. So I want to get onto how people can write out their own skill nar skills narrative. But before I do that, can you give us an example of like, can you share some of your skills that you're technically good at versus organically good at just so people can be really clear on like what that means? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. So. It's funny, I actually, um, it's kind of sneaky, sneaky insider trading, but um, the, the skills that I listed on the article, that little example, were actually, that's my skills narrative. Um, so when I wrote that, you know, I, one, I felt very vulnerable writing that and sharing it, but also like, I think it's quite true. So a uh, technical skill that I think I'm quite good at and ha it's been validated by people that I work with um, is project management. So seeing a project, creating a project plan, executing on it, and then driving results, right? So that technically is a skill that I've learned to do over time um, and have gotten quite good at. The organic skill and probably the complementary skill to that is being a good collaborator. And why I feel like I'm a good collaborator is because I grew up my whole life playing sports. So I was constantly on teams. Some, day, some days I'd be the stars. Some days I would have to take a back seat. Some days I would play. Some days I wouldn't play. But it was all in the effort to win as a team. And so I think if a really good project manager 
tends to be a really great collaborator. You almost can't have one or the other. And so that's where, that's a good example of where organic and technical skills really align. And you could start to find that like bullseye where if your technical skills and your organic skills meet, that's exactly where you should be in a career. Um, I think you'll be very happy and satisfied if you can find those two meeting points. I love that because sometimes people think um, that if, if something comes naturally to them, so for example, I think a lot of, uh, uh, throughout my career, I thought that um, d developing relationships and connecting people, I just thought that that was like what everyone did and I didn't realize that that was actually a skill that um, even though it comes easily to me is actually really valuable, right? For some companies and some job descriptions. So can you just talk through like, what's the best way to kind of identify what those qualities are that do come naturally to you? So sort of your organic skills. And then how do you identify like your technical skills as well? Should you do sort of like a survey with your colleagues or like what is maybe like a three-step process that people can go through to kind of physically write down what are all their skills, both organic and also technical. Yeah, okay, so my, the process I would recommend for this is first like take a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle and start listing everything you think you're good at. And it, what you'll find, and particularly as women, is we really actually hate identifying <laughs> the things that we're good at. Um, I think we often feel like, oh, but like, am I really good at this? Like, hmm, I don't really, I haven't been trained in this. You know, no, please like try to take that and throw it out the window because that is like such a female thing to do and we shouldn't be doing it. Um, but great, feedback. yeah, so first off, I would start listing everything down, both technical and organic. And then what I did um, was once I had this kind of list done, I went to my manager at the time who I really trusted, right? Like, I think this is a pretty vulnerable conversation to have with someone. So you want to engage with folks that are, you know, you feel it's a safe place. You trust that they're going to give you honest and constructive feedback. And also people who know you and have worked with you, right? Like, don't go to your parents. Your parents are going to say like, yeah, you're great at all of these things. We love you, of course. Um, but go to people that you know will be constructive. Um, it's my dad, like my dad, I'm pretty thinks, thinks I should run for president. I'm like, absolutely not. Um, Although but interestingly, though, sometimes that, so that's family might one. be good at helping you identify those organic skills, right? Maybe just to, just to be devil's advocate. Yeah. I think organically they've seen you progress throughout your career. Right. So like your friends and family understand those organic traits because they're truly what forms who you, like they are who you who are. You are yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I think as women, like we, and men do this as well, like this imposter syndrome that you talk about maybe a lot is we start because of feedback we've gotten in the office. We sometimes temper who we are because we feel like those are maybe skills that we shouldn't have to be successful, or maybe those are skills that aren't welcomed in the business. And the reality is it's like your friends and family are great at like, calling bullshit on that and saying, what, hang on, like you are great because of these qualities and you need to own that and be confident in it. But I also think like, you know, this is where defining, like once you get this list down, you really start to understand where, you, what types of jobs you should be in, right? Because if you go for a role that doesn't really want someone who you know, what would be a good example? Like want someone that is great at building relationships because they just want you to focus on one thing all the time. Maybe that's not the right job for you because if you're someone that naturally is good at building relationships, you should be in a role well, that's like a core focus of your job. One, because right. you like it and two, you're yeah. good at it. So why not, why not lean into that? So hopefully that answered your questions, maybe. No, that's great. And then, and then, so when you, so, so we sort of identified that like you, your family's probably just going to say all the right things and they're maybe not going to be the most objective people, although they may be good at helping you identify some of those organic skills. And then if we think though, and hopefully some of your colleagues in, in, in workplaces or previous workplaces can help you with the organic and the technical skills. If you just have no idea what people think of your technical skills, what, how can people go about doing that? Like, what would you recommend people do? So, so you mentioned in your instance, you actually had a conversation with your manager. 
Uh, is that like the best step do you think for people to take? Yeah, look, I would say anyone who works in a, in a larger environment probably has t some type of performance review process that they need to go through every year to evaluate their performance in the workplace. Um, and that's where I think managers are really helpful because they're usually quite intimately involved in that process and usually are a good place to start. The other thing that actually a friend of mine did, and I'd love your thoughts on this, Becky, um, Steve Lacey, he's an amazing leadership coach based out of Adelaide. He actually sent an email to kind of, I think it was like 20 of his mates, some mentors, confidants, like people that know him very well, professionally and personally. And he just said to them, if you could choose any job for me, what would that job be? Um, yeah, Ryan and, Ryan and Steve, two friends of mine have both done this. Like, what do you think about that as kind of, about kind of like crowdsourcing that sort of 360 feedback about your skills? Because sometimes we're so close to what we do every day that we don't even know where we're adding value, right? So do you recommend getting that input from sort of lots of different facets of your life? Yeah, that's a great um, question. I think the the coach was right on that. Like, if you feel comfortable asking someone, like, what should I actually be doing? Yeah. It's do it. I think what you also have to be prepared for is to hear something that you one either never thought that you'd be doing, right. or two, like you're now faced with this. Oh my gosh! If if someone who like knows me deeply understands who I am and basically just told me I should be in something else that's completely different from what I'm doing now. Like, I think there's part of you that has to be ready for that um, because, because it could be quite, yeah. you know, exciting, uh, but also something to potentially take with a grain of salt. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause no, you, you may say, Oh, like, that's great that you see me in that role, but I may not see myself in that role. But yeah. maybe if I did, like, what would that mean for me in my career? And what, what changes would I have to make? What learning education would I have to take on? Um, to get there. To get there, yeah. So, okay. So right now, everyone who's on the call and everyone who's joining on Instagram Live can literally get a piece of paper, um, pop it on the wall or on the table and just kind of put a line down the middle um, and, and, and kind of identify those two different sets of skills, um, organic and technical. And then once you've got that list, um, then what? Like, what should you be doing with your skills narrative? Once you've identified it, like, I'm guessing we want to put it on our LinkedIn and build it into our resume, or what do you think is the best, the best next step? Yeah, so for me, I think there's two ways you use it. The first way is you use it as a benchmark to help define your next career move. So once you've listed out the skills and you've identified what you feel like you're quite good at, what you should then do is say, okay, like, where am I at in my career today? Am I ready to take the next step and potentially get into a role where this, I can do more of the things that I'm technically and organically good at? Um, fantastic. It gives you a little bit of a North Star on where you should be heading as far as your jobs and career kind of planning comes in. The second piece is like, if you're already at the stage where you, you kind of know what you want to do, maybe you're already interviewing, I think you have to practice taking that, those things and writing, like actually writing your narrative. So when you go and enter in an interview, you have those five key technical or organic skills that you can kind of say straight off the top of your head. And that becomes your talk track right. for every interview you have, right? Um, right? You can be confident in it. You know exactly what they are. They've been validated by people who ultimately may refer you into this job. Um, and I think it's just a really strong positioning as far as de determining, like defining who you are in, for an interview. Totally. And actually one of the reasons that we built the pep talker app is for this exact reason. So some of you might have the app, some of you might not, but essentially what it does is it sends you a prompt two or three times a week to kind of reflect on what you've done at work that you're really proud about. Um, what do you want to kind of recall for your performance review or what achievements have you made? And the idea being that when you kind of develop an, a, a dossier of those achievements, you start to see trends, which is kind of sounds similar to what you're saying. Like you want to kind of get that feedback about the trends in your behavior and about the trends of where you're succeeding at work so that you can kind of pivot your career to go um, in the trajectory of those strengths. Do you then recommend Becky as well kind of 
aggregating, as you said, like the top five points that you've taken from your skills narrative and building that into the description in LinkedIn, you know, that section that kind of says the about you section, because I think for employers and recruiters, presumably you want to be able to kind of just get a quick sense of a candidate by reading that section. Is, is that something that you say is, is best practice at LinkedIn? Yeah, Maggie, that's a really good call out. I, funny, that's actually the one section in my LinkedIn profile that I think needs some work, which is the about me section. So you've given me an idea. Um, but yeah, absolutely. The irony of that, Becky. <laughs> yeah, so true. Um, but uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I think that makes a ton of sense. Um, and I also think too, like we, we as females need to, just lean in and be confident in what we think we are all about. And so again, like I said, like putting it on paper, making it public, sharing it with the world, like that's a really vulnerable place to be, but you just got to right. own it. And you know what? I'm going to come out of this call and do that for, for me um, on my LinkedIn. So yeah. great, great. <laughs> I love that. And just quickly, Becky, before we wrap up, um, we're going to post a link to the article um, in the Zoom chat and I'll post to the, the link to the article in Instagram as well so people can swipe up and check that out. Just finally, Becky, you know, for people that are looking to keep their job, for people that are looking to pivot, for people that have, you know, lost their job or are looking for a new job right now, what trends are you seeing at LinkedIn? Like, what are your kind of top tips for people who are kind of maybe feeling a little bit anxious right now or just kind of looking for some advice um, in terms of best practice at times like this? Yeah, um, good question. I don't know if I have the best answer for it. Um, I think the one thing we can do collectively is listen to what the sentiment is across our socials, across LinkedIn, um, amongst friends and family, and really see where people need help. Um, and whether that's an organic skill that you can provide, which is, I'm a great listener, like offer that, offer that, offer that to others um, in your community um, and give back in that way. I think if you are during this time, like looking for a new role, like it's pretty difficult. I'm not going to lie. Like there's tons of hiring freezes, tons of folks are unemployed. Companies are concerned about like what the future may hold. So I think if anything, what I would recommend is focus on you and growing areas of your technical skill sets that you want to capitalize on and make a priority in that narrative. So for example, if you are like, I'm really great in Excel and I want to take these skills to the next level. So when I go into the, you know, go and interview for my next job, I can essentially say like, I am an expert in this. Like that's just taking your technical skills and bringing them to the next level. And there's no better time to do online learning. You know, yeah, we're all totally. at home. Like you could sneak away, do a 30 minute course, you know, practice things. Like, Now's the time. Now's the time to take advantage of learning online um, and improving skill sets that you probably are quite good at, but can really take to the next level. Right. So investing in yourself right now is the best thing that anyone can do. Um, yeah. One question that we've got is like, when you've kind of identified your skills and you know, okay, I'm really good at X, Y, and Z um, organically, and I'm great at this technically, how do you then work out what is the best company or what is the best job to go to leverage those skills and to kind of stretch into those skills? What, what, what advice do you have for people um, asking that question? Yeah, um, so when you look at selecting a company in which you wanna be in, this is actually a bit different of a question, um, that, like a different kind of talk track than your skills narrative. Because for me, like, the way I've always chosen roles and companies is based off of things that I feel really passionate about. Um, I believe in their mission. I, you know, really like the people on the team. So if you're transferring from like one team to another inside of an organization, like, you know, working for people you admire and respect always should be a first kind of priority. The second is like working for a company that you believe in their mission um is 100 percent, i think important not all of us have the luxury of working for our dream companies but i think if you could use different companies as, as stepping stones into what could be ultimately your dream company 
that's that's helpful. Um, right. I hope and I, I think, answered that question. Okay. No, I think that's true. And I think also it's like if you're clear on what your skills are and what you want to do, then it also helps you filter out the companies you don't want to work for or the roles you don't want to do. So if you hate people, if you have no interest in people, you really don't want to be applying for sales roles, right? Or communications roles. There's just, it, 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 there's just no point. So I think also being clear on this helps you kind of niche or niche for our American viewers into the right role and the right company. Um, one great question that's also just come through from Instagram Live is when you're in those job interviews, how do you naturally talk about those skills without it sounding forced and without it sounding like you kind of wrote a list? I mean, I always say, we, you know, I have a, I, my first company was a media training company and we always said to people like, you know, you have to practice and it sounds ridiculous and it sounds so obvious, but you actually have to practice, practice, practice so you can make it sound natural so you can, you know, not sound nervous. But I'm interested to see if you have any advice on that, Becky, as well. Um, so this, if, if you want, um, I'll give you a recommendation for a course, uh, for, for those on the call, um, any course in media management is a great one to take. So basically what media management is, is it's a lesson in how to handle reporters and interviewers. And really, if you think about it during an interview process, like you, you Obviously, you're being the news. You're telling the reporter what they need to know. Um, you actually can really create a narrative that's quite special and doesn't feel forced. It feels actually quite authentic. Bob Iger, who's the um, CEO, now almost former CEO of Disney, he is one of the best media-managed CEOs out there. Um, if you watch him with the reporters, and the way he talks about the business, the way he talks about himself, it is perfection. Um, and what he also does is he constantly brings people back to the five things that he wants them to remember. And I think it's the exact same technique yeah. in an interview, right? You'll, you'll get asked things you, you can never ever answer, um, yeah. especially straight up on the spot. So what media management teaches you is how to bring the person that is asking the question back to what you wanna talk about. Um, and it's just like little tips and tricks on how to interview well. And then also, you know, what you of course need to know is like, what are the things that you want to say? And that's where I think the skills narrative comes into play. Yeah, it's so interesting. I just put a link actually to the Zoom call. So um, the media training course, and this was not planned, by the way, between Becky and I, but um, my first company when I was a journalist is a media training course, which some of my colleagues still run. And one tip of advice that I would give to people is it's called ABC. So you answer the question, you bridge and you communicate your key message. And so I think when it's in a press interview, you're communicating a company key message or whatever. But when you're in a job interview, I think it's the same thing, right? You're communicating your key skills, which is, I think, what you've really helped us identify, Becky. Um, so being clear on what that message is, is one thing. And then the next thing is, how do you communicate that in any situation? Um, so if anyone wants to, just send me a DM or send me an email and I can send you some resources on that as well in case that's useful. We've popped the link um, to Be Becky's article um, in so you can check that out but Becky thank you so much for joining us I'm really grateful anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up today no look ladies and gentlemen whoever's listening like just be confident in who you are and what you can do in this world and I think you'd be really amazed at like how long that list gets and you know yeah. own it be proud of it and work it so I love it. Own it and work it. And if you're feeling brave and you've done your list today, feel free to post it on Instagram or LinkedIn and tag the two of us. You can find Becky on LinkedIn, Becky Dawson with a Y and I'm Maggie Palmer also on LinkedIn, of course. Um, yeah, but tag pep talk her on Instagram. If you want to share your skills narrative, or if you have any other questions, send us a message, but we're delighted that you were able to join us. Thank you so much. And we'll be back the same time tomorrow for the next power pep talk. Thanks Becky. Thanks team. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.